Heaven and hell. <laughs> hey. Got some gray over here. Daily OGT. We are going to do a little man with a big voice. Um, for context, he took over for Ozzy Osbourne in Black Sabbath and went on to have a pretty good solo career afterwards. We were talking about the one, the only... To, uh, I got a buddy on the Charismatic Voice Discord whom I sing karaoke with, and he sings a lot. He's got a hell of a voice. And he wanted me to check out this song, you know, GL. Also, this is really the first time I've dove into Dio at all. So. Let me uh, let my faithful partner here know that we are recording. So he doesn't do anything crazy. Ooh. And earbuds are coming. <laughs> I guess I should pause it. One earbud, two earbud. Okay, we're live, bub. Just want to let you know. And, um, I, I told them I said, let me let my buddy know before he just does something stupid that he don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I told him, you know, about the who requested the uh, little man with a big voice, um, requested or replaced Ozzy in Black Sabbath and had a pretty reputable uh, solo career, or maybe with other bands, not sure, but had a career on his own afterwards as well. Yes. So can you add to that context, sir? Okay, so he started with a band called Elf. He <laughs> fronted... <All right. laughs> little short guy in a band called Elf. Elf, yeah, makes sense. Um, I think he actually started playing trumpet, but I don't think he ever did that like professionally. That's just... But uh, started with Elf, sang for Deep Purple, Sang really? for uh, yeah, sang for Rainbow, uh, both Richie Blackmore projects, and then uh, went to uh, then replaced Ozzy in Black Sabbath for two albums. That was Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules, and then after that, him and drummer Vinny Apice, I believe, uh, broke off to form the Dio Band, and <clears throat> Dio was with that band. God, I think their last album came out in two thousand two. I think. So yeah, he he made music for a long time. He he passed away in 2010. Took the of, uh, stomach cancer, which absolutely sucks. But oh. I do know that even towards the end, he still had it. He still had a great voice. He still had um, a great stage presence. So it, it's heartbreaking to think you know, what could have still been had he not been you know, taken so soon. I think yeah. it was like 69, maybe. Yeah. I actually did not know that. And we have reacted to this song already yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, maybe I'm trying to get my TV turned off. I ain't quite right. <laughs> That's technology for you. Yes, sir. Come on, you sack of fucking shit. Is my mic on? <laughs> All right. But I, I believe uh, a deal, obviously, very, very respected by his contemporaries. I think both Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson basically said, yeah, there's Theo Deal at the top of the mountain and there's everyone else. So that's a pretty solid endorsement, I think. And you also have a really world famous opera singer. Was singing oh my God. <laughs> 18 different languages, and yeah, I think it's every continent but one. Mm -hmm. Um, and headline Carnegie Hall, um, uh, yes. Elizabeth Mazzara from the charismatic voice. Dio yeah, is absolutely, absolutely her, yeah, her favorite singer. Robert Plant, I think, took it over for a little bit, uh, and yeah, yeah. once the sexual <laughs> essence wore off. <laughs> She went back to the little weird guy. So, <laughs> weird looking guy. 
I guess and Robert of course, Pierce Neo really was the one who popularized the uh, the devil. Yeah, that, that oh yeah, you didn't see. It. I started the reaction like this. The, yeah. Oh, you can't see me. <laughs> I can't see you, of course, but well, I'm guessing what you're. You can't anything in my mind what I think you're doing. Yeah, no, I just won't start like that. So, um, this song is called Invisible. No, I couldn't see it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, you see what I did there? I see something like that. So well, I didn't. I didn't see what you did there because it was invisible. Yeah, I like it. We're in camouflage. Well, this is from uh, this is from Holy Diver, uh, Dio's first solo album. It's considered a classic. That of course the uh, Rainbow in the Dark, Don't Talk to Strangers. A lot of classic songs on there. Uh, I'm not as familiar with this one as Vinny said. We did react to it uh, yesterday, but there's uh, plenty to dig into still. Well, it's like against my moral code as a reactor to react to something I've already heard. But this is, I've been waiting to do a deep dive into Dio for a while. Damn, say that three times, deep dive into Dio. I just think we should take, you know, a minute to laugh at OGL for sounding like a chipmunk. <laughs> I don't like my voice, period, guys, just so you know. So this, when it gets even worse by, by means of a technical failure, that's just inexcusable. Right. I uh, tend to agree with you on that. Oh, you were awesome. And I didn't know Dio passed away, by the way. Yeah, that he has uh, stomach cancer, so <sighs> yeah, yeah, that sucks. It's a terrible thing. Literally is a terrible thing. And I this is not meant to be disrespectful because this is it's darkly humorous, but on the other hand I get to legitimate um, inquiry. Ozzy is still alive. Like <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but it's like what is keeping that dude alive? <laughs> yeah, it must be the bat juice thing. I don't I mean Jeff Beck recorded guitar on Ozzy's last uh, single that he released at patient number nine. Jeff Beck is dead. Ozzy's still alive. Dio replaced Ozzy in Black Sabbath. Dio's dead. Ozzy's still alive. Maybe it's the <laughs> don't replace Ozzy curse. <laughs> I guess. I mean. Uh, I, whatever, I think I saw something online. I was like, whatever biomechanicals they've got to keep an Ozzy alive, I want some. And like I said, it's, it's bad because I know he's in a lot of pain right now. And I know he had to like stop touring and that sort of thing. I know like his back is all fucked up and shit. God, like, he's lasted a long, a lot longer than I thought he would. So props to the fucker. Durable as shit. No doubt. Rose has a thorn to, to fucking John Jet. I love it. Um, nah. So Dio's voice sounds different than what I expected. And um, I ain't gonna give you government name, but but Wolf Man Singer in middle, um, I really see how devoted you are to sounding like Dio because I, no offense to Dio and his fans, but that reminded me of, of singing karaoke with this man because he sound, sounds similar. So anyway, Dio's voice was very kind of, it cut, but it was not what I expected. It kind of sounded like, <laughs> look, and I just realized it, I, this was not on purpose. Ozzy, when Ozzy sings <laughs> a melodic line, that it had that 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 tone to it, that snare. But then when the eyes come there, I love the way the instrumentation dropped. By the way, how many do we know who this band is? Do we know anything yeah, about any guitars or heavy bass? Have, um, any of that? Right, it's a single guitar band. I will. I've actually got this lined up here. It's a single guitar band. The guitarist is Vivian Campbell. This, I believe this was his first album. He's gone on to play for a number of acts, most notably Def Leppard. Uh, slightly, a slight shift in, shift in styles there. I've seen them. The, yeah. Um, you sound like eat pop rocks. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so uh, Vinny Apice <laughs> is the drummer. He was the drummer for Black Sabbath for the two albums that Dio was on. Somebody said Dio just sort of, he ran off, he eloped with Dio. To form this band, uh, a guy named Jimmy Bang. 
Jesus. Yeah. So the chipmunk thing was bad enough, but that popping that was almost worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like we were at a campfire. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on here? That was a chipmunk being burned in a campfire. <laughs> It was uh, Alvin Voorhees. Yeah, I know. I was six. I know. Alvin and the Chipmunk. That's Duck Tales. I don't know the Chipmunk song. All right, let's do the other. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, did you say yeah? Yes, let's do the So we were way more coordinated than this than the other one. <laughs> it was a great reaction. That's you know, that's what you get when you fuck shit up. I'm not into none of this. Fucking lightsaber out. I saw that. I just found the son of a bitch under the damn <laughs> cabinet there, man. I had it a long time. I used to lightsaber everything. Like, I'd put little effects on. Pow! With a flashlight. Like, it's the worst thing you do. <laughs> Shot a flashlight in somebody's eyes. So the lyrics um, are well written. Does Dio write his own? Lyrics or do you know? Yes, he does. Yep, the lyrics are all Dio. Ooh, that's cool looking. Ooh, I like that. Oh, total clips of the heart. We were just singing time after time for us. Come on. Maybe it was during this. Hell. And your circle stays broken. If your circle stays broken, you're a lucky man because it never, never, never has for me. Ugh. Damn, son. Come on around. If you're so... Okay. It's just leaving. In the palace of the virgin lies the chalice of the soul. 
And it's likely you might find the answer there. Love the religious overtone fuck you lyrics. Did Black Sabbath cuss? I think they did, didn't they? Honestly, I'm not sure. I do know that uh, Tony Iommi did occasionally poke fun at uh, Ronnie's lyrics because they tend to have a lot of um, fantasy influence, which I guess wasn't his thing, even though like Iron Man was a science fiction story. So I don't know. I guess maybe there's just some friction there. But I always like the fantasy elements in Dio's work, and that's sort of how he... That's the angle he approached the art with. He was basically sort of creating an alternate world for people to escape into, but the world was built from the fabric of real life emotion. So, I thought Iron Man was like a meta- metaphor for like not plucking, plucking shit out, plucking the bullshit out. Yeah. Self contained. There was a, yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, there's a story there about someone like going back in time and stuff like that. It's, like it's musically, it's like one of those songs. It's the first song people learn to play on guitar a lot of times because the riff is so iconic and so simple. But lyrically, it's more complex than people think it is. Yeah, but, I, just, I don't think it's, it's about a fantasy character, but I, I could be wrong. I, I thought, I've always thought it was like, like self reflection, um, kind of like Roger Waters puts up the wall. This is the Iron Man, he's mm-hmm. the man of steel from Hank Jr. Um, there are a lot of songs that I shall see if. I'll see if I can dig it up. I remember reading, I said, it's about someone who apparently goes back in time and ends up getting turned into some sort of machine. It's crazy. Um, yeah. I'm not big on reading what people think songs mean. Well, I, I think it was from Geezer himself. So uh, Geezer Butler, the guy who, uh, Fox have a face, who wrote the song. But yeah, I'll, I might be, gotcha. uh, I might be mixing a bunch of things up. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm I'll totally go just going on what I thought when I was young. I'm, I have no idea. But, uh, I, I pictured Ultraman. <laughs> <laughs> but I, there's like a lot of cool images here. She was a photograph just ripped in half. Half. I like guess your self image being shattered or destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, 13 years of teenage tears. I love the rhythm of these words too. I uh, usually associate deal with a lot of very flowing melodic lines. This one is very you know, punchy, yeah. rhythmic. The light, um, the answer right beside her coming down. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned this in the original reaction where his voice in the beginning, you mentioned it actually made you think of Ozzy. And I definitely see that because it kind of had that nasal resonance going on. Uh, it's a bit more relaxed, uh, very pretty. And then, of course, when the guitars and the squealies come in, he whips out the grit and the uh, aggressive enunciation. So, yeah, Dio. Uh, He's the whole package vocally. Yeah. Yeah. We got some chops, that's a, for sure. A small but very potent package. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> that sounded uh, foreign testing. But, but they always say, little guy physically, but gigantic voice. Yeah, I mean, dynamite comes in small packages. And that is a beautiful but image right there. Adam bombs come in really fucking big ones. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I just thought of the wrestler, but anyway. Oh, God, you remember him too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Come! 
learn that from? Is that the same drummer that does Into the Void? Yeah, th I think Into the Void was Bill Ward. I think. This Man. is many a piece. This is the one that played on the uh, the two Dio era Sabbath album. This... I mean, he's not doing nothing extravagant, but he's putting the feels. Oh, yeah. In the... He's keeping a rock. Either in the board. minors or the downbeat. I can't tell, but it's they're definitely in the opposite where they should be and they're done incredibly well. He's one end of the kit to the other. Um, um yeah, it's just really good. I was just gonna shout out uh Vivian Campbell, the guitarist on this uh album. He's doing an amazing job. That solo was a piece of art. That was that really quick ascending run towards the end. It just felt like tension that was building to a bursting point. And his stuff and his leads in the beginning. Just had this very longing, lyrical, uh, tormented sound. It kind of reminded me of Kirk Hammett's work in the beginning of Fade to Black. Just beautiful stuff. Um, Vivian would go on to play for a number of different bands, most notably Def Leppard. But I do, I definitely think this is some of his best work. I see Def Leppard in 2016. Served with some hot dogs. I, uh, <laughs> I also love the uh, the pause that Dio does uh, before when he says "I can be," and then there's a pause, and then he says "invisible." Oh, yeah, I love, yeah. It. yeah, love it. Dio, you're pretty cool, man. I'm gonna check you out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean. So I bought the book, and then I took a fast look at just the very last page. I wonder what you all think that means. I think I know. I think that the very last page. Wait. Don't look it up. That's cheating. No, I'm just I'm looking at. I've got the lyrics up on my thing here. Oh. Okay, so I bought the book. I took a look, and then I took a fast look at just the very last page. I mean, uh, usually when you look like in a book, when you look at the last page, that's looking at the ending, that's spoiling the ending. So maybe they uh, they saw the path, but they saw where the path they were going would lead, that prompted them to change direction. Or the single words I just heard for the two that came before. The only way to really stay is to walk right out the door. So yeah, from say person probably saw read about similar situations uh saw where the people had ended up and said okay yeah i'm, I'm getting out of this just like i said i think this song is about escaping from oppressive situations so it just, i mean it could be running away from home it could just sort of be retreating inside yourself or it could be about uh, speed video. oh sorry i thought yeah. you done <laughs> no, no, you say you know, I got the whole kit and caboodle, I got the whole book, I wrote the book on it, or um, they told me, they told me that that in the, in the book, you know, like, so I bought the book, drugs, like all of them, I took a fast look, speed, at just the very last page, or it could be that the Bible speaks of revelations, and a lot of people think that that means not the end of the world, but the end of the structure and the walls caving. So you didn't have to read the book. You had to take a look at the very last page. 
which is a new beginning. All could be the yeah. meaning. I'm just saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Dio also, uh, you know, not a big fan of institutionalized religion. Most uh, most metal bands were not, but that actually does make sense. Um, Because I've always liked the way Dio was able to sort of articulate the feelings of um, confusion, sort of trying to figure out where you're going, maybe trying to figure out who you are, and presenting them in a musical package that feels very empowering. That makes us want to charge out and meet the challenge head on. Don't don't A riff. Sounds better than me. I think it's about speed. Guitar just hit the same note. That was like um, um, recipes, down bag, and uh, dickhead. Um, Paul, what, what, what was his name? Pantera. Phil Pantera, yeah. Right from Cemetery Gates. What's his name? What's the singer's name? Uh, Phil. Phil, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, 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 so was, that was cool. No, I don't know that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, some, yeah, some, yeah, right. When the guitar hits the same tone as the yeah, that's actually a good. Uh, that might be where they got it from, but uh, yeah, that's really cool. The guitar comes in and picks up the urgency where uh, Theo's voice was. Yeah, so I think it's about yeah. buying dope from the drug dealer, kind of like life in the fast lane, and um, I think because he said that. This is the two before. Uh, if it's talking about religion, I can't. I don't know where that would fit into the. The uh, accepted story of any religion, the. The two before, so I'm not sure, but we'll I'm sure that you guys can tell us in the comments. Um, sorry, you, you ready, Joe? Oh, yes, go for it. Go away! Oh. Is this the 80s? A classic fade out? 80, yeah, 84, 85, I think. I think the fade out works for the song because it feels like maybe the story of these uh, individuals he's talking about is still yet to be uh, fully written. So I like it. I like, again, love Vivian playing on the outro there. This, this vocal vamping as the song winds down, I don't think there's anyone better than Dio. Uh, if anyone's ever heard Stargazer by uh, Rainbow, um, first of all, if you haven't, check out the charismatic voice reaction to it it's amazing but 
Dio's uh, vocals at the end. I mean, they're all great, but his vamping at the end is just next level. He's just amazing at just carrying a song's energy through yeah. its very, very end. It's almost like a a, a wave of uh, bravado at the end. Mm-hmm. A crescendo yeah, feel like, never ends. Yeah, you feel like if they didn't fade out, he could literally do that for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned the drummer. Uh, his fills were crazy. Like he was holding that groove down steady, but when he got busy on those fills to pick up the energy, those that was some crazy shit. Um, uh, yeah, this, those um, fills were better than feel. <laughs> <laughs> fills better than feel. I, yeah. I will remember that. Uh, yeah, this again, Holy Diver is full of classics. This song actually flew under my radar, and I'm ashamed. So now I'm gonna have to go through, listen to my entire Dio collection, make sure I haven't uh, some treasures have, haven't uh, eluded me, or I might just step back just in case we might need to react to another few. But this now between '82 and '89, I feel like so much amazing metal came out. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I really wasn't aware of it at that time. I didn't find out about metal till like early, early, early '90s, so I had to go backwards and discover it. And uh, as you can see, I still not finished discovering it. So that's another great thing about uh, about a reaction channel, about doing reactions, about watching them, is you can discover, you can rediscover things. You can learn something you from yourself. Yeah, you can learn something from someone you thought you knew very, very well. Mm-hmm. I um, had no damn idea Pink Floyd's time was talking about buying a Learjet or money. <laughs> mm-hmm. Think about football, too. I don't know none of that. I was just mumbling shit, I guess. Any better than it. Um, Deep Purple right there, guys. I, I, and gals, I've never heard a lot of Deep Purple, so if you're interested, that is a band I could definitely react to. Guys. And um, there's Oasis. Um, uh, Greg's not super familiar with Oasis. Uh, we're definitely going to ACDC. Motorhead, I've heard most of. Uh, there's Field and Pantera and uh, No Brains. I mean, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana and uh, Zeppelin, Sabbath, and uh, help, anybody, help, you so many help. Fucking idiots. They were better when they broke up, I think. I mean, then they were... uh, I also do want to sort of throw out that, of course, the moral crusaders were in full effect in the 80s, especially when it comes to heavy metal. Anything that mentioned anything dark, of course, had to be evil or satanic and whatnot. And you can just hear a song like this, and he's he's just talking about emotions. He's talking about things that people felt that you know, I guess, the certain people didn't want uh, didn't want out there. What was the line in uh, Three Different Pigs? Uh, we got to keep their feelings off the streets. Yeah, I mean, I just to me, this is just the uh, and we got to the song that's about some very tormented individuals trying to escape from their circumstances. What was the line we got, we got evil a, about it? Oh, sorry. We got a lot. We got a lot of those. We we meet or I oh, have that man. Damn. In the pigs thing, we got, we got a lot of those that we trust or something or. Yeah, something like that. Wow. Yeah. And when they turn their back, you can put a knife in. Yeah. So, singer of metal. Uh, AC, not ACC, uh our damn Dio fans. I just dropped some shit. Uh, this was not our best reaction. I mean, we uh, had already heard it, and I just feel so fake doing it and trying to talk on something, trying to remember what I said, and then if I said it in this video or did I say it in the first reaction earlier? Or So it's a little... But it's a great song. I thought it needed to be out there and not chipmunked. And you know, we'll try not to chipmunk anything else unless they got their damn horns up. Pretty sure the chipmunks have been removed from my uh, from my house and from my computer. Well, that sounds good. We are uh, yeah. metalheads. Leave us some more suggestions, especially for Dio. But we'll take them all. We we try to answer any and all requests. So it's- Bear with us. We'll put them out there at some point. <laughs> as quickly as possible, guarantee. But we hope you liked it. 
mental health is real. I always like to say. I stole your line. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Mental health is real, guys. <laughs> We're good, we're good examples of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? We are good examples of it. Can you not see me? I've turned Clearly. the camera on where you can see me. Yeah, I see you now. Yeah. Where I went. Yeah. <laughs> well, hell. <laughs> uh, now's the end of it. I wonder why. Like, I, I've been cutting him off because he couldn't see me, you know. <coughs> <coughs> so, um, man, that sounds like a cold. That ain't good. Yeah, it's not. Is it getting cooler down there in NC? Uh, no, no, not at all. It's, um, it's only cool when I go outside. <laughs> the temperature shift here in the Ohio Valley always wrecks my sinuses. I got a crazy anyway, teacher guys. who wears dark glasses. Things are going great. <laughs> only getting better. Take care of yourselves. So you can take care of each other. So you don't wind up like us. <laughs> Cutting each other off. <laughs> Trying to end this video smoothly. But, no. Uh, Listen to heavy metal, guys. Metal. There's actually scientific studies that prove that listening to metal helps you mentally. But just listen to killer music. Metal and Join us here. Hang out with us. Tell us what you think in the comments. Join the OG team if you like. We'd love to have you. We just want to talk about stuff, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and post in the comments. You guys talk too much. So you ain't got to that part. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. But we'll see you around at the next one. Thank you all so much for joining us. Why does someone cut this shit out, man? Where the fuck is it? I might have to be some editing done on this intro. Might have to be some goddamn editing done. This piece of shit motherfucker won't find the goddamn <laughs> right video. Right man, fuck, what the man. fuck is fuck going on there? Fuck. Community fucking <laughs> fuck the guidelines, man. Why well, I don't want to know why your fucking platform ain't working right. <laughs> fuck Mark Zuckerberg. Who knows? Who wants you to do this? That's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry, yeah. laughs> uh, sorry, Buckerberger, or whatever the fuck your name is. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, Burger. <laughs> uh, I have fucked a chicken and took my dick and said, blah, 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 blah. I have never <laughs> fucked a burger. <laughs> I have seen the clouds melt and acid rain fall across my face, but I've never felt that a br uh, that an egg looks like a fucking brain. <laughs> I love that fucking I love Felix. You are awesome, bud.